Okay, uh, this is a short tutorial on Photoshop. Uh, this is going to just introduce you to the interface, the Photoshop interface, and some of the tools. Uh, what you see here is uh, what Photoshop opens up into. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create new uh, so you can better see the tools and uh, what's going on. Uh, right now, I'm just going to title this uh, real quick with the uh, and tools so interface and tools i'm going to switch this over from pixels to inches you're going to see this every time this opens up this this sets up the the actual document and the size of the document so when things get uh printed out they're going to get printed out uh, with uh, this size in mind so i'm just going to do uh, eight and a half by 11 and actually I'm gonna make 11 here and make this eight and a half and I'm gonna make sure that the orientation is in port not portrait mode uh, landscape mode and uh, change the resolution if you want to print this out and it to look professional 300 um, change it from grayscale to cmyk anytime you are publishing any uh, thing that you create in photoshop uh, cmyk this is what the printers use rgb is uh, red green blue that is for uh, when you want to uh, publish your work onto the internet um, the monitors use this Printers use this, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Um, so go ahead and click on that. 8-bit, uh, 16-bit, I choose 16-bit. Um, and it, your preference, white black, a white background or a black background. I'm good with white, uh, so I'm just going to hit Create. And uh, you'll notice that here it is. Um, here is the ruler right here. Uh, it starts at 0 right here um, if you left click and hold and you can bring down a guide and it snaps to uh, particular edges i just want to show you this um, so you can see that over here this lines up with the zero or if you want to kind of snap it to any 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 kind of margin whatsoever uh, you have control of tossing out these guidelines these guidelines do not print out um, I do recommend that you toss in guidelines to indicate that a quarter inch on each side is has the potential of being chopped off um, so any content you want here um, you're able to put whatever you want and, and bleed all the way up to the very edge and what I mean by bleed is your content can go up to the very edge but I wouldn't put anything like text right here because if it, it gets chopped off that that text might have the potential of getting chopped off so if you want to put a page number here or here down here um, I would definitely recommend that uh, you stay with not within these guidelines you stay uh, outside of these guidelines stay with it within um, this rectangle that I've created. Um, so anyway, that's just a, a heads up um, of how you can get started. Um, so let's talk about the interface. Uh, your usual suspects, file, edit, um, are, are right there. Um, file, open, um, so you can um, reach uh, files that you've already created new for new uh, we kind of already went through that process close uh, you can close it there or here um, print save save as your usual suspects uh, here in editing uh, you can cut copy and if you'll notice that there are commands that are similar to the commands that are in uh, word or excel so uh, what photoshop and adobe um, did is they kind of made it familiar with some of the commands that already exist, which is great. Um, undo is Control Z, step backwards, Alt Control Z. 
Uh, if you're using a Mac, it is uh, Command Alt uh, Z. Um, if you're using a Mac, it's a little different, but all the commands are there. Uh, I use it on both. Um, right here in, in this box, uh, you can manipulate your photos, uh, transform, free transform. Uh, really, honestly, there's, there's a handful of commands that I use, especially when creating uh, content for either portfolio or web content, or if I'm just uh, making flyers. Um, and most of the commands I use here, or I use a hand command, or a, a shortcut command, keyboard command. So control T, um, I, I like to use that one a lot to resize things and, and get things going. Uh, image, now you can adjust the image. So the mode, we already um, declared that it is going to be CMYK, 16-bit. Adjustments. Uh, these are the adjustments that you can do that you typically see in like the camera app on your phone uh, where you can adjust the levels, brightness, contrast, hues, colors, um, and add filters and stuff like that. Um, you can even invert something uh, like if you have a, floor, a set of floor plans, you want to invert it. All the black lines turn white and all the white area turns black. So it kind of looks and has that feel of like a blueprint. Um, and then we'll get into layers. Now layers, if you've used AutoCAD before, um, you understand the layers. Now layers is um, pretty vital when using Photoshop. And you'll see your layers right here. And essentially what you're doing is you're stacking you're creating a collage essentially and you're stacking pictures and texts and you're, you're putting it all in this area to make it look like one cohesive photo um and so it's it's kind of like a chop shop in that regards um, there's other things you can do with um layers uh, we won't get into that right now uh type you can uh, rasterize a type layer. Uh, you can choose language options. Uh, a lot of different stuff you can do with um, topography or any of your text that you want to add in there. Select. There's different select tools. Control A, select all. Control C, Control D, select. Uh, deselect. Inverse is uh, Shift, Control I. And I believe. Uh, where is it at? Uh, ah, anyway, back to that. So there's different selection tools. Uh, a lot of the selecting tools that I use are right here. Filter, these are great uh, if you want to do some types of blurs, uh, distortions, or if you want to pixelate something, or you want to render um, a lens flare. Um, uh, really, really cool effects that you can use uh, right here. And I want to say you can browse filters online and add to whatever filters you want. I don't know if they cost any more than uh, what the ones that come with, but I generally use the ones that come with. Uh, 3D, we're not going to really mess with 3D. Uh, view, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, uh, zoom in is control plus plus, uh, and zoom out is control minus. Um, you just got a, or a control plus and then control minus and zoom in and zoom out. Um, and that, I, those are the ones that I usually use, uh, the guidelines right here. Uh, this is what they're referring to when, uh, you want to either lock these in and you don't want them moved ever because you can adjust them. But once you have them set up, you can have them locked in. Um, if you don't want to see them anymore, you got too many things going on, you too many too many guidelines going on here. Uh, you can use guidelines to kind of help center things, to help group things in particular. Maybe you have a quadrant you want to you want to create four different quadrants within this uh, rectangle. You can help. You can use guidelines to help you with that. And this command right here lets you lock those into place so they don't accidentally move. You can also clear your guidelines. Um, 
So, you know, there might be some guidelines in here that I don't want locked, but I want maybe these ones locked. So I'll lock these ones first and then and then I'll um, toss in the other guidelines and make, clear them up afterwards. Uh, window. Uh, this is typically if you don't see something like layers over here, uh, you just click on there and it pops up. Um, there's different things that you can swatches, styles, paths. Uh, we're not really going to get into that because we're just going to use what is here and layers. So let's talk about um, the interface. Uh, you can have multiple files open. Uh, you can see how I can close out on this one. Uh, I can open up a new one and it'll pop up right here. Uh, well, um, I'll just change this to that. Uh, hit create and bam, I can switch from back and forth to different files. But let's stick to this one. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this one. I'm not going to save it. Okay, let's get to the tools. Um, I can drag and drop this out if I want, but I generally like it to, to be in one spot right here. Um, this tool is your move tool. And this tool, you can move and slide over your pictures or your texts in any position that you want on the uh, workspace area. Um, so let me just put in some text. Oops. And that kind of got inverted. Let me fix this. Mm. All right. Oh, text direction. There we go. Right here. Sorry about that. Okay, so. I'm going to shrink this. I'll tell you why I shrink that down later. But So the move command, hit the letter uh, V, and you can just grab whatever you want and move it wherever you want. Um, we'll get to the text command and, and what that means. Um, right now, we're just starting off with the move command. Uh, you see that the letter V right here represents the keyboard uh, shortcut. Uh, I would definitely create a cheat sheet of these. This is the marquee tool, uh, and you can hit the letter M for the shortcut. And this is a selection tool. Actually, this tool, this tool, and this tool are all selection tools. If I hit the letter M, I can select what I want. Um, and typically, when I'm doing something like this, um, Maybe I want a background and I just want to uh, create a new layer and I can do that right here down here in this uh, right hand corner uh, this looks like a, a sticky note click on that and then you have new layer now how layers work is the very bottom layer right here is the background this is sitting on top of that and this is sitting on top of both um, so what I can do is I can hit um, I can paint this, and I'm just going to paint this a, a random color, just so I can show you how to um, paint, uh, or I'm sorry, show you uh, how layers work. And so uh, within this layer over here, come over here and double click, and I'm just going to call this uh, blue box. Always, always, always name your layers. Just name them something that you know exactly what it is because you do get a little thumbnail uh, but sometimes stuff is way too small to identify what it actually is so name it something to where you, you're leaving yourselves little breadcrumbs now remember how i said that this is the very bottom layer and this is a very top layer and this one's in between 
there's a reason why you can't see this layer. It's because this one's chilling on top. If I was to left click and drag and bring this under, you just see how that kind of highlighted that line in a teal color. And I'll let go. I'll go ahead and let go of the uh, left click button on the mouse, and it moved the order of what you see the um, how you see the layers. So you see how we're just stacking stuff together to create one cohesive thing. Uh, you can sh you can turn on and off layers using this little eye. Um, and so that's. In a nutshell, how you use layers, um, the selection tool. Now, the selection tool, if you right click on some of the commands, most of the commands, there's other tools associated with each command. The artboard tool, uh, I'll be 100% honest, I, I, I've never used it. Um, I'm just going to show you a few of the commands that I use frequently. The marquee tool is a great one. I like to use that to select entire pictures. Elliptical one, I really don't use very often because if I want a circle, uh, I usually find something on the web. And um, what I'll do is I'll select that perfect circle. Um, the elliptical one, it's not quite a circle. You can guesstimate. Um, you know how close a, a circle can be but you know even that looks off um, if you also right click uh, you can use a single row marquee tool and what it does is it it'll select a single uh, row of pixels and I don't know why that didn't work oh let me make a new layer so Well, I was supposed to select. Anyway, um, typically how it works is it'll leave that line here, and you can go ahead and brush. Yeah. There it is. I don't know why it's not showing. So I'm using the, the blue brush to, to kind of brush in that particular line. And if I want to move that line, I can... Use the marquee tool or um, click. Oh, also the marquee tool or any any of the tools. You see how it has this dot right here? That is that particular one selected. Well, what if I want this one? I have to click on that one. And now that's the, the go to. So anytime you hit the letter M for this particular tool, and this goes for any tool. Um, it'll always go back to the one where the dot is. So just right click, double check that it's the right tool you want. Um, I want this particular layer. I want to move. Oops, not move. It's not doing it, but I can use the marquee tool. Select this line. And then uh, use the move tool. And I can move this line wherever I want. All right, so that is the marquee tool. There's also a single column. Uh, let's just say I wanted to throw a line here. And I want to do the same thing. If you're wondering how I'm painting, I'm using the letter B for brush. Uh, it's down here. Um, and this circle, it can be adjusted. That's the size of the paintbrush. We'll get into that when I get there. Um, So um, that layer is done. Um, again, name your layer. Um, something that you know what they are. So small lines. Um, turn them on, turn them off. All right. So that's the, the three different uh, variations of the marquee tool. This tool is very useful. This is the lasso tool. Um, if you hit the letter L, uh, it'll automatically come up with the lasso tool. Now, there's three variations of the lasso tool. The, la the first one right here is the freehand lasso tool. So uh, you left click and hold, and you move your mouse however you want. And it'll select that pattern. Um, 
I'm going to hit escape. Go back here. Um, right click, and this is the poly, uh, polygonal lasso tool. Now this tool uh, uses line segment by line segment selection. Uh, this is very useful, especially if you're like doing buildings or cutouts of certain things, and you want to do something real quick. You don't really have to worry about the any jitteriness of your hand. It's going to drop a straight line by straight line by straight line. And lastly, this is the magnetic lasso tool. Uh, if you're trying to select, a, let's just say a dog in a picture, uh, the magnetic tool will try and guesstimate exactly what you're trying to select. And you see how in this area it kind of went out of line. Just hit backspace and it'll back up. And you can get closer and closer. I would try and get as close to the object as possible so it lines up. Um, granted, I'm doing a rectangle. Um, but if you can see, if this was a dog, this would be much easier to select the dog. And once you're done, hit the space, or I'm sorry, hit enter. And it will select um, the uh, appropriate things that you wanted to select. And so that is the lasso tool. Again, this is the letter L, uh, marquee tool is letter M, and the move tool is letter V. Um, also, the marquee tool is a safe tool to uh, be in at all times. And what I mean by that is, what if you're in the erase tool and you accidentally left click and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, there is control Z, but if you're in the marquee tool, okay, you just accidentally clicked and you selected something. Is anything gonna happen? No, not really. So. This is one of the safe commands that you can be in at any given time and not really um, screw anything up um, too terribly wrong. You actually really don't. Um, you really have to get into other things before that messes up. This is the magic wand tool. I love this tool. This tool uh, will select any one color all at once. So if I want to select this box real quick, Bam, I just click once and it'll select all the colors um, that are within that pixel that you clicked on. So um, it has to be the same color. Um, this works better on pictures, but you can see clearly that I've only wanted to select something blue. Um, this works well when you're trying to select uh, people or hair or um, you know, just really out of the ordinary shapes. Uh, this kind of guesstimates within a particular color, uh, but it will only select one color. Um, and if it's really close to white or a different color, it'll select that one too. All right, so that is that one. Um, the quick selection tool, I haven't used it. You're welcome to, to try these out. Um, and let me jump into all right this is the crop tool um there's different types of crops uh, variations of the crop tool i only use this one um i use this to crop photos to crop entire canvases um but that that's all that i use it for i can i can crop Uh, different views. Um, I really, really don't use it very much. This is the eyedropper tool. This is a very useful tool. If I want to, um, let's just say, select a particular color within the um, working space area, I selected white and bam, um, I hit OK. And this blue box right here will turn to white. And you can clearly see that that changed to white. This is your color palette. It only has two at a time. Uh, you can switch the different colors. Uh, I want this to be blue again, and I want it to be the same blue. 
this eyedropper tool once you move out of here you can select whatever color if i want black i can click on black if i want blue and you can see that if anybody's ever taken any color theory there's an assigned number for every particular color uh, if you have a particular color that you want to use over and over again i would definitely recommend writing down this number because you can type it in and it will automatically go to that number um, you can try and type in all these in but this is the easiest one this is the color code for this particular uh, color right here this color blue um, so i'm okay with that i'm just gonna hit okay and that's the eyedropper this is the spot healing tool and you can see how it clearly if you roll over it gives you um, an idea of what the tool does um, and um, the letter j is associated with healing uh, so we can get that stain off of this person's chest this is the brush tool if you right click on that um, this is a paintbrush uh, pencil tool um, I really just stick with the brush tool if I'm going to do anything. The clone stamp tool. This tool is amazing. Essentially, what you're doing with this tool, I don't use the pattern stamp. Uh, the clone stamp tool, um, if you hit Alt, let me get into it. Um, so, if you can see my cursor, it's a small little circle. If I left click, at any given point, I can adjust the size of that. You can see how that got bigger. Now, this is the size that you are you are of uh, area that you're going to, and this is the exact area that you're going to choose um, to start off with. And so, in order to use the clone stem tool, uh, you have to hit the the Alt button. And what it's going to do is it's going to anchor itself to any particular point in any picture and it's going to copy it and you can clearly see that as i move my brush it's moving up in this area as well the cursor because it was once anchored here right here um but i'm still using that same anchor to brush whatever I want. Now, typically, what I use this for is if I want to clean up a model that I did and it's got some jagged edges, I'll find an edge that's really nice and crisp and then I'll clone stamp it and just, or I might copy it using the marquee tool, copy it and then stretch it out. Uh, it really depends, but this is a very useful tool. Uh, I, I've used it on my sister's wedding picture. She had a a few blemishes because of stress and you can clearly see what it's doing right here it's selecting it right here it's kind of anchored and then they just go and they start adding more flowers they're essentially copying and painting the new the uh, existing flowers on here to make it look more full all right this is the history brush tool I don't ever really use this, but um, you're more than welcome to try it. The erase tool, the letter E, it um, erases anything that you've done. I use this for a lot of blending. And so you can see right here, actually, if I right click, you can change the hardness of your erase tool. And I can change it all the way to 100, and it'll just take out this corner right here in one big chunk but if i want to blend right click again and bring this down to like 11 where it once was oh you could also type it in come over here and i can come out here and, oop, and change the size so i left click and now i'm just changing the size and you can see how oops change the hardness that's fine. Change the size. And when you go to blend an edge, you start out, you see how I'm not going all the way up to that line. I start out a little bit out here and work my way in until that line goes away.
This takes a little practice. Um, if you feel like, you know, you're getting a little anxiety because here's the thing. Once you let go of it, it'll remember that as the last command. So if I do control Z, everything that I erased came back. Let's go back. So, um, So if you like how that edge came out, let go and then go to your next edge. If you like how that came out, great. Let go, go to your next. Or if you don't, control Z and go at it again. But if you like that edge, go with it, let go. Um, that way you're not stuck with one huge thing that you did you can go segment by segment this is a gradient tool um, this is pretty useful you can create gradients within uh, certain things uh, play with it it's it's kind of I won't say it's difficult to use it's just not not very friendly uh, it takes me a while to remember how to use it every time I use it um, but it's a pretty good tool um, this is the blur tool you can blur whatever you want uh, you click on that right click again you can change the size of the brush and you can blur whatever you want and so I want to blur this edges blur these edges a little bit more to create a more faded look um, sharpen tool it's the reverse of the blur tool smudge tool much like when you do shading and you use your finger to kind of smudge uh, a pencil uh, sketch and you're trying to create this shaded effect same thing you're just doing that with um, a computer mouse so you can see how once I move this it, it's smearing and smudging the different paint um, it's a pretty cool tool I like to use the smudge tool uh, especially after I use a clone stamp tool um, to get to take away a lot of the uh, perfections I want imperfections and so this helps kind of mask those perfections where it's it looks like it's photoshopped I can use the smudge tool to uh, to kind of negotiate that this is the uh, dodge tool and the burn tool you can um, uh, play with these these the, this burn tool it's pretty useful if you want to create like shadows and stuff like that um, but you can use a paintbrush for that as well this is the uh, text tool um, and I do not want to vertically type I want to horizontally type so uh, right click and there's variations of the tools uh, you can type in a vertical mask and essentially you can brush um, the letters after that if you want um, anyway you can play with them uh, first you have to um, left click and then drag a box open uh, kind of like an AutoCAD and then you can start typing away. You can choose various fonts, um, much like in Word. Uh, text size, um, you can justifications, uh, color. Uh, you can even uh, do little modifications where uh, you can create an arc. And so uh, you can also increase the bend of the arc. Um, so a lot of cool things that you can do. You can do some distortions. Yeah. It's horizontal distortion, vertical distortion. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to mess with that. So I hit cancel. And so that's a lot of the stuff right here. Uh, you can hit the check mark when you're done. Um, and there is your text.
trying to find text that I use that has a variation of what it is. Here we go. So this text, um, that's, you know, there's variations. You can download texts of different fonts for free. Uh, if you don't know how, uh, YouTube, it's, it's really easy. It's not really, that, it's not hard. Um, beware of the clickbait on finding texts uh, or different fonts. I, I've literally spent six hours trying to find fonts and I found a bunch of cool ones. I'm like, whoa, 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 okay, I'm wasting too much time. Okay, right here, uh, we're going to skip that. That I, I really don't use. Um, it might be useful to somebody else. Um, you know, for what we're doing, it's it. The selection tools are really what I use the most. The brush tool, the text tool, uh, clone stamp, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, you can create lines. So if I wanted to create a line, and um, have a line there, I can I can do that. Um, but you can see that if you don't get it quite straight. It's not going to look straight. Uh, you can also create other shapes, rectangles, uh, ellipses, polygons, um, custom shapes. This is really freehand. This is the pan tool. Um, it's it's like the hand tool in SketchUp or the pan tool in um, AutoCAD. Um, when you're using it, just um, left click and you'll be able to move especially this is especially useful when you're zoomed in and you want to move across the screen and i believe this is letter h for hand yeah uh, so control plus to zoom in control minus to zoom out uh, zoom in zoom out um, that's pretty much the interface of photoshop